Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. All right. <clears throat> hail to you all indeed. Hail and welcome back to the Random Human Ramblings podcast. It's been a minute. It's been a hot minute. It's been a very hot minute because we are in the middle of a very hot summer here in uh, the Northern Hemisphere, at least in this part of the Northern Hemisphere in Middle Tennessee. Um, but good to be back here, guys, uh, broadcasting and streaming and, and, and doing you know what I usually do uh, every week here on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Had a little bit of a hiccup in terms of what this week's show was going to be um, in terms of guests and, and participants and all that kind of fun stuff. But you know what that means for you? That means for you that you have just me this week, but you also have an awesome guest lined up for you in the coming week. And in the coming weeks, as a matter of fact, we're going international um, in, in, in the middle half of uh 2022 you know um the last podcast we had a guest from australia um not this week of course but next week we should hopefully have a guest in canada joining us and then uh sometime around the beginning of august or so we should have someone joining us from the united kingdom the uk yes that is a fact uh you can take that to the bank um cash it deposit it, do whatever you want with it. Uh, but that's not this week. This week is just going to be you and me. So let's go ahead and just light some incense real quick. Um, and let me give you an update on things. Things going on here and about here lately. Got some mugwort, and I'm not exactly sure what the other one is, but it's a uh, it's a it's a dual stick situation. Okay, it's a dual incense situation going on here. A lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of healing going on here now and today. Um, so I did want to talk about you know uh, I was absent for last week's podcast, and I want to thank you all, uh, thank you all for your you know, understanding uh, of the situation. I've, uh, I, 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 I fell ill with uh, the COVID virus and so did my wife, you know, so there was a lot of focus and attention put on the hearth and home, which as I've always spoken about um, in my podcasts and, and videos is that that is where heathenry, uh, the, the heart of heathenry lies in the hearth, you know, and making sure that hearth and home is taken care of first and foremost above everything else. And that can sometimes uh, present challenges with what we want to try and do um, in our heathen communities and, uh, and, and such, because so, so, so many of us, so many people are, are yearning for community and are yearning for camaraderie and, and, and 
having, you know, people of like minds or, or, or similar thoughts, you know, people who share in the same ideals and, and whatnot as us be a part of our, as it were, family units. And I have to wonder if at times the, the failure of creating such things and if the failure of establishing such things um, res, you know, the, the failure of which lies in our own failures in, in focusing on the hearth and home, you know, uh, because what I see a lot of times is people pushing for community, pushing for kindreds, pushing for tribes, pushing for uh, communal assemblies. Of, 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 of people who they think are, you know, or, 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 or have similar worldviews. Um, and there's not a lot of vetting, there's not a lot of focus on, you know, the home, the hearth, where, where, where things originate from. And so the push to create or establish a familial unit whether it be tribe, kindred, whatever you want to call it, outside of the inner circle, outside of the roof tree, outside of that family unit. Um, trying to establish something outside of that fails because the hearth and home are damaged, and then there is no hearth or home. Right? There, there, there's nothing that can be rightly established as being such. And so we lean where we see people leaning more towards the online community, right? We see people more um, focused on becoming part of an online or virtual family community, uh, virtual kindred, virtual tribe, that sort of thing. And uh, whether it be, you know, uh, Facebook, communities, Facebook groups, Facebook pages, Discord servers, you know, that sort of thing. And people, YouTube channels even, I mean, you know, just you name it, whatever that virtual community uh, establishment might be, you know we see recreations or, or versions of family popping up in so many ways, right? Oh, you listen to this band. Oh, you like this song. Oh, you like this, you know, sort of artistry, this sort of, you know, uh, you know, style, this, this, this artistic view, this, uh, you know, just various things that, that maybe touch on certain aspects of an ancient, archaic lifestyle. Things that, that appeal to, to, to the masses, right? There, there's, there's a lot of things going on in pop culture now and today, right? I'm talking beyond just the Marvel MCU, you know? Um, talking beyond the whole Thor and Odin aesthetic. I'm talking about things like uh, the Northmen, you know, I'm talking about things like uh, the Last Kingdom, I'm talking about other multimedia productions, whether it be Hollywood, whether it be other smaller production studios, whether it be whatever it is, you know, um, things that are appealing to the northern european or germanic aesthetic you know it's in the forefront ladies and gentlemen it's 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 very loud and it's very dominant and it's and it's prominent in pop culture these days and so the prominence or the dominance of that aesthetic seems to draw the attention 
of certain individuals, certain crowds, right? Certain people that think that this can be established, cultivated, grown just online. And it can't be. It simply can't be. This uh, <clears throat> insurgence or, or increase in, in interest, as it were, of, I'm going to use air quotes, right? The old ways. Foreign saith, I'll also do whatever you want to term, whatever term you want to put to this sort of thing, you know? It's a... Uh, <clears throat> I guess it's been here for a long time, you know, whether it be through that, you know, the history channels, uh, Vikings, whether it be through Amon Amarth, you know, they were putting out a lot of new material lately. Uh, one of their, one of their newest songs is titled the great heathen army, you know, there's this, uh, I don't know, man, like there, there, there always seems to be this, breath you know how you breathe into embers and you and you breathe new life we breathe life into seemingly dying embers right there, there there's there seems to be this constant uh, insurgence resurgence i don't know that you know the northern european indo-european perhaps indigenous pagan practices that have just i don't know man like <clears throat> I can't really speak to the to the to the interest that it that it rose like in the, in the 90s and stuff because I really wasn't a part of that but like the mid to late 2000s and here we are now you know like there there's this constant stoking of the coals to keep things relevant with northern european germanic whatever uh Paganism, polytheism. And I think there's, I, you know, I think that there's a place for it. I think that there's a value to be considered with that whole thing. Um, but the, the focus seems to be simply on the surface. It's, it's, it seems to be simply on the aesthetic of it. And if I were to sit here and say that, like, look, do I dress like this all the time? Do I, do I go out into public in a hooded, you know, ensemble with a tunic and, 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 and all this kind of stuff? Absolutely not. Like, this is just for the podcast. This is just for what I do here on, 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 this, on this platform and other platforms. You know, what you see here in this moment is to capture the attention of a certain audience. It is, right? I live a very specific way and I, and, I, and I exist in a very specific way that transcends what you see on the surface. But what you see on the surface is a part of me, right? The ritual theater, the, you know, adorning ourselves and, and, and creating an atmosphere for ourselves to embrace and encompass the thing that we maybe are closely, closely drawn to. Right. This is part of it. And I've been condemned. I've been chastised. I've been ridiculed. I've been thought less of for the aesthetic. I'm sure a lot of us have, you know. But the aesthetic is very simply put the surface of it all. It is the surface of it all. This is not a requirement. This is not mandatory. This is not what you should be doing necessarily. 
to embrace the spirituality, to embrace the path or whatever, it's maybe a, something that you're going to reach. Maybe it's something that you're going to achieve. Maybe it's something that you're going to arrive to at a certain point, but it's not mandatory. Um, I am who I am, and I heathen the way I heathen. I am a pagan in the way that I pagan, right? Just like many people uh, observe their religious practices in their own way, in their own individual way. I am just one person. I am just one man. I am just one individual. I am one sentient living being that coexists amongst other sentient living beings. And this is a part of me. This is a part of uh, who I am. And this is a part of how I uh, wish to be seen. It is not all of me. It is a part of me. There are other parts of me that you will never see, at least not on this platform, at least not in this way. Right? And that should be understood and that should be respected. The whole Viking thing. You know, like that's been something that has been romanticized, over romanticized, celebrated uh, without any real understanding of what that is. You know, who are the Vikings? They were farmers, they were farriers, they were. Smiths, blacksmiths, bladesmiths. They were the common folk. And they lived during a time during history when you had to do whatever it took. You had to consider whatever means necessary to survive, to give your family something better. And at that time, those things meant pillaging, meant raiding, meant invading. It meant taking things that weren't yours of birthright. We don't live in those times now. We don't exist in a time of raiding and pillaging, you know? But because of that, because of that being something that was keyed in on the Viking age, right? Goes down in the annals of history as being a time of, you know, heroes, you know, much of the sagas the Icelandic sagas and the Norwegian sagas, many of the sagas that were written that we have documented, you know, recollection of happened during a time in history called the Viking age. It was a tumultuous time. It was a time when the beliefs of the indigenous people of Northern Europe were being eradicated, sometimes very violently, to be replaced by the globalization, the global dominance of the Judaic Christian religion. And you know, I, I grew up uh, as Christian, and I grew up with a Christian worldview, a non-denominational denomination, denomination, denominational Christian worldview. And it was a very unique uh, thing in that I, you know, I, I, I grew up in a uh, closed off, uh, you know, society that was very tribal, inherently tribal, you know, take care of your own. The outside world is the outside world. You, you take care of what is within, you know? 
and religious views aside so much of what i feel is is valuable now and today and in, in even modern culture today touches on the things that i was brought up in religion aside because quite frankly there were there were there were things about the religious teachings that i was brought up in that that just don't check out for me it's largely why i'm pagan it is 100% the reason why i no longer have dealings with my blood kin all of my family all of the people who i consider family now and today are of no birth blood kin to me they are kith they are that extended family they are that extended family unit people who have proved themselves worthy to me to be called a a, a, a title of familial bond you know and having just gone through a very recent you know health crisis as it were you know i tested positive for covid last week no well, week almost two weeks ago actually now my wife tested positive for covid just this last week we're here we're alive we're recovered you know but having gone through that having gone through that you know health crisis you know my wife being someone who is immunocompromised having prior medical conditions that the covid virus could you know add to to to, to problems on you know myself being someone of, of relatively strong uh, background i have I have no prior health conditions you know I, I i made it through the the uh the omicron variant relatively unscathed you know yes there was a day or two where i was you know in in fits of of you know uh, fever dreams and visions and things like that that were just you know alarming but i you know to be honest i've I, my ass has been kicked harder with the common cold than it was with the omicron variant of of the covid-19 uh, virus my wife on the other hand you know had some pretty substantial um health concerns and you know we we got them checked out fortunately she is clear of any other major health concerns you know all of her x-rays all of her you know uh heart scans and all those types of things that were done proved to be clear um so you know thank the gods and, and ancestors for that but one of the things that you know having gone through something like that was the people who checked in the people who cared the people who were close while being distant you know checking in sending a message sending a text sending whatever were not blood kin to me you know and it goes back to this whole thing that i that i constantly see about you know tribe and kinship and, and kindreds and, and you know having these 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 familial units build out of seemingly nothing you know this uh this desire amongst people to have a clan to have a unit to have a community to connect with I wouldn't have what I have now if it weren't for already establishing a strong familial unit, whether it be through adoption, whether it be through marriage, whether it be through blood, whatever. There has to be that. You know, folks, there has to be that uh, family unit. At least so far as I've been able to, to ascertain, you know. The family unit that I have exists outside of blood kinship because those who are blood to me and that are a blood, you know, whose blood I come from have shown themselves to be less than uh, honorable and less than uh, 
I guess they, I don't know, they consider me outside of their family and outside of their family unit and outside of their roof tree and outside of their hearth cult because of my religious practice, because of the way that I, again, on the surface, appear at times. What you see is only partially what you get. I don't walk around looking like this. I don't walk around in face paint. I don't walk around in an altered state of consciousness 90 some odd percent of the time. I am coherent. I am connecting to the life that exists around me in the ways that it does. You know? And if people can't see past that, if people want to, assume that this is some sort of facade, that this is some sort of a possession, that this is some sort of a, you know, fake representation of who I am and what I'm about, then they fail to understand the assignment. They fail to connect with other living forces that are around them. You know, this, this podcast is a bit different um, than, than other podcasts in the sense that I am speaking to the void. <laughs> um, the void includes some of you that are watching and listening now and today. You missed the, the podcast for last week because I was taking time to heal. I was taking time to focus on my hearth and home. And I was taking time to withdraw myself from the outer and focus on the inner. That is necessary. That is absolutely necessary at times to focus on the inner. And even during my focus on the inner, I was able to understand and know that healing, true healing, does not happen in isolation. There are parts of isolation that are required to start the healing process, but the healing process occurs and happens during movement. The river backs up when it is dammed. Trees and plants are choked out when they are not given enough soil and enough nutrients to grow within. We are choked out. We die in isolation, my friends. You may consider yourself a solitary practitioner, but I do not believe that you, as a solitary practitioner, withdraw yourself entirely from any sort of life. You may be solitary, you may be alone, you may be by yourself, but you are connecting to some sort of life force around you, whether it be the trees, the rocks, the air, the water. There is some sort of life around you that you are tapping into because otherwise, my friend, you die. You become stagnant, you become moldy, you become dead. You wither, you rot in isolation. And if that is where you choose to stay, if that is where you choose to remain in that darkness, you will lose life. You will only grow so far. You will only heal so much. At some point, my friends, you need to break out of that isolation. At some point, you need to recognize the life that is abundant around you and if you don't tap into that if you don't reconnect with that if you thrust yourself into that seemingly cozy cocoon of isolation you will die think of that the caterpillar, you know, has to isolate, has to go within that cocoon state. 
there's 100% isolation and separation from the world around. But at some point, they break free. They break free to become the thing, to become that new life form that the world around them understands and knows as that is who she or he is. So many people think that isolation, solitary practitioners, the soulless, right? So many people think that that's where it ends. I can't find anybody else. I don't trust anybody else. Yeah, I get it. You're only going to grow so far. You're only going to reach a certain stage. You know, classic example. I broke out of my isolation, as it were, by going out and becoming present in the public. That insertion into the public space resulted in me picking up the COVID-19 Omicron variant. It did. I went to a show. I went to a concert with my cousin, my wife's cousin, who needed camaraderie, who needed friendship. I stepped out and I went to a show. And then, you know, three days later, I'm, I'm running a hundred degree fever, wearing a hoodie in, you know, hundred degree temperatures. Sometimes. Okay. And this is just me speaking here. Sometimes being exposed to those things, being exposed to that darkness, being exposed to that element is the necessary thing that pushes us into a new layer, a new stage of growth, right? My intentions, my purpose of going out was not for me. I could have cared less about the show that I went to. I don't listen to that kind of music. I went because someone near and dear to my hearth was in need. They wanted that camaraderie. And I went outside of my comfort zone to be that source of camaraderie. And it was a great experience. So what if a few days later I fell sick? It was a learning opportunity. It was a learning experience. And I took the experience. I took the encounter. I took what happened to me. And I made the most out of it that I possibly could. I rested. I knew, you know, nurtured myself. And I touched the bare earth with my bare skin. I absorbed the bright, life-giving nutrients of the sun into my eyes and my face and my skin. I went outside of my comfort zone during my most uncomfortable moments. And I connected with what is most primal and what is most sacred to me, the earth, the sky, the wind, the air, the sun, all of that. And did it help me heal faster? I could say it did. I'm not a medical professional and I wouldn't recommend what I did to anybody else that I know because it worked for me, but I'm not a medical professional, right? I don't sit here on any sort of pedestal and say that you should do the same thing. You get sick, go out and stand out there in hundred degree heat and, you know, put your feet in the ground and all this kind of stuff. I know what worked for me and I know what allowed me to heal. You need to know what you need to heal. You need to know what steps you need to take to allow the, the nutrient-rich spirits around us, earth, the water, the air, the fire, 
all of these things, all of these things that our ancient ancestors knew and understood, how you reconnect, how you reestablish a connection in that way is going to establish you. It's going to, 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 to solidify you in things that you want to do for the people around you. If you are not prepared, if you are not ready to protect and grow your own hearth, your own home, however big or small that may be, whether it's just you, whether it's you and a roommate, whether it's you and a, a life partner, whether it's you and a spouse, however you identify, however you establish this sort of thing socially and, and its construct, right? It starts with you. It starts with us. It resides with us. When everything else is said and gone, we are what remain. You know, and I got, like I said, it's, it's, it's a bit of a different podcast this week because I'm, I'm getting kind of visceral. I'm getting kind of very, uh, you know, down to earth, as it were, with all of us. But I hope that it's enjoyable. I hope that it's, I hope it means something to you to be a part of this moment with me and to reflect with me a little bit because maybe you didn't experience the same thing I did but you're experiencing something yourself. You're a part of something yourself right now. You're involved in something right now that you need to focus on yourself with. But don't get lost in yourself. Don't get lost in that isolation. Don't get so absorbed in the solidarity that the rest of the picture gets forgotten. Look at it like a puzzle, my friends. There are the outer layers, the edges, and then there's what happens in the middle. If you've set the boundaries, if you've set the edges, it's time to focus on the middle. But that middle is building the bigger picture. It's not where it ends. It's not where it stops. So there's your, there's, your, uh, there's your meal to digest for the week. Hopefully next week we have a very special guest uh, from British Columbia area of Canada joining us uh, to talk about all kinds of fun things um, going on in the mythical, weird weaving aspects of things. And then the coming weeks and months to come in, in, in August, we have a special guest coming to us from the United Kingdom. So, yes, the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast has branched out this year into the international waters. You know, last episode we had uh, James from the uh, Raven Sage Healing in Australia. Next week, hopefully, we have a very special guest coming to us from Canada, British Columbia. And then next month in August, the United Kingdom. Lots of fun things lined up. Hopefully they manifest themselves. But regardless of what happens in that arena, I will be here to the best of my abilities. Thank you so much for your ongoing support and understanding during the medical crisis that myself and my, my, my nearest and dearest had happened. We are coming through it. We have conquered and we are here to sing our songs of victory. And I hope the same for you, my friends. So whatever it is that you do, do it with gusto. Do it with intent. Do it with purpose. Do it to honor your ancestors. Do it to honor the gods. And do it to leave a legacy behind you when you depart this mortal plane. So in the interim, I hope you all take a moment to check out the link tree link that's posted in the description and show notes of every Random Heathen Ramblings podcast episode. Be sure to like, follow, share, subscribe in any sort of way that you're able to on any platform that you're so willing to engage in. Thank you to my patrons uh, and, and, and those on Patreon that have pledged their support. Your rune drawings will be coming soon. Um, again, because of the medical thing that I had to deal with, there is some delay in that. 
Uh, but it is coming. And thank you for your ongoing and constant support in that area as well. Don't forget to share this video, share this podcast, engage in any sort of way that the platform uh, elicits you to do so. And until we talk again, may your ancestors always smile upon you and walk with you. And may the gods continue to notice you. See you next time.